It's Wednesday, October 18, and time for your Barbados Day afternoon news update. I'm Kmar Jordan. Thanks for joining us. A high wind warning is in effect for Barbados for the next five days. According to the Barbados Meteorological Office, strong easterly winds of 25 to 39 miles per hour with gusts of 55 miles per hour began affecting the island early this morning. Forecasters warned that the winds of this magnitude could cause isolated power outages and falling tree branches. They're also urging residents to be vigilant for falling tree limbs and loose outdoor objects or lightweight furniture being tossed around. The Met Office attributes the high winds to a building Atlantic high-pressure system, which is generating low-level winds across the island and the Lesser Antilles. The warning is scheduled to be lifted on Sunday at 8 a.m. Meantime, a small craft warning also remains in effect. Until then. The president of the Barbados Economic Society, Jeremy Stephen, is predicting that Barbados will suffer another downgrade before year end. Addressing a Barbados International Business Association public forum at the Grand Salle of the Central Bank last night, the economist lamented that there was no end in sight to the country's economic woes. Mr. Stephen told the forum, which was held under the theme Thriving in Crisis, that while the Minister of Finance, Chris Sinclair, was making the right moves, it was all a little too late. I'm being very blunt about it, but it's just that the policies have been right, but they've been far too late. So with that in mind, you've reached a situation, just in closing, where drastic remedies will have to be taken on both the onshore side of the country and offshore side. Onshore side, we're seeing it right now with the effects of the NSRL on local businesses. I'm sure my colleagues can spit at length how that's really damaged them. Also, the issue of getting access to foreign exchange, which might not necessarily impact international businesses per se in the room, but it will have an impact in the perceivable future, particularly given the employee costs, and I will go on a limb and say the devalue cost of the Barbados dollar, which is 2% higher than it was a couple months ago. It will impact on ancillary services that can be provided to the international business sector. The fact that the country has continued to be downgraded and look out for one more before the year is out. Yes, you, had, you heard it today. They said it earlier this year that two would come. Another one would definitely come just given the environment we are in. Meantime, Chief Executive Officer of Williams Industries Limited, Tom Hall, says the prevailing economic climate, coupled with initiatives outlined in May's budget, are making it harder to do business. It makes it very, very hard to um, trade in those circumstances. You get not only the increased cost, I'm not saying whether it's required or not, but just trading in these environments is very, very difficult. It's also the principle that you can change something so radically without, so, without warning. That makes people nervous. I'm going to be more nervous going into the next budget. I'm going to be nervous before that budget. I'm going to make sure we've got more buffers in our current assets, if there's a problem, it slows everything down, it makes more risk. So the operating environment in Barbados is getting harder. There's still some fantastic things about Barbadian business. Um, that's why I am here. I feel there's a chance that this could become um, what we hope it would be, which is the place to do business uh, in the Caribbean or in Latin America. Acting Attorney General Michael Lashley has spoken out against a recent video on social media which shows a boy, no more than eight years old, smoking what appears to be a marijuana joint while relaxing outdoors with peers. Mr. Lashley told Barbados Today the matter was one of grave concern and one which was engaging the full attention of the relevant authorities. Any alleged um, criminal acts towards uh, minors, uh, of course, should be treated um, with the full weight of the law. But of course, they cannot um, go into the substance of the, the matter, but of course, um, we sh as a society should really look after our children and of course, try to guard against any criminal acts towards our children. Meantime, Industry Minister Donville Innes says there are lingering weaknesses in the public sector that must be addressed to improve the ease of doing business on the island. He says there are quite a number of civil servants committed to the efficiency of the sector, and though this is supported by good functioning structure, now is not the time to sit back and relax. I think sometimes the often will say people don't realize that as a ministry or department, you may write a letter on an important matter to another ministry. And sometimes six months pass and you don't get a response. And you wait on that to make a decision. Um, you know, sometimes even within ministries, you, you, you send a file across to someone and a couple of weeks later 
Nobody is going to back to you. No, these, these, are, these are unacceptable fundamental issues. Mr. Innes stresses that there must be greater appreciation of how delays affect business activity. I saw correspondence on Wednesday from a long-established private company in Barbados that was sent to the director of a public institution complaining that for over two years they've been waiting on that particular institution to refund them monies that are due to them and that um, the institution has not responded to the various letters and the company is therefore prepared to close one of their departments and move to another location. But the thing that saddens me, if that is true, if assuming that is true, because we, we have to wait if it is investigated, that that particular departmental head of that institution received the correspondence and did not act on it, or that particular department did not act on it. You know, say the, even the issue is not getting the refund, but at least acknowledging the correspondence and letting them know. I am saying that that company should not be in position today to sign home workers and move to another location. The head of that department should be fired. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados today, touching one community at a time. Turning to the region in the face of the recent passage of two powerful Category 5 storms, the Caribbean this hurricane season, the head of the St. Lucia Met Services is advising residents not to panic. The heightened concern by residents comes after two days of continuous heavy rainfall and thunderstorm activity. Yesterday, it was just moisture and instability left in the wake of a um, uh, trough system. But today, we, uh, we are under the influence of a tropical wave. And the tropical wave is moving um, very fast. Sometimes, you know, we'll have heavy, a heavy shower. Um, and there's a very good chance that we will have um, thunderstorms as well. But after the showers, we, the rain will continue, light rain will continue, and um, an improvement in the weather conditions will come tomorrow. Descartes says preparation is paramount and the citizens must simply remain alert. I can understand why people are concerned because it has been raining for, for, for quite a while. And you see, we have a lot of runoff. So you see, it's very easy for it to flood anytime there is a very heavy downpour so people naturally will be concerned so the usual advice be, be vigilant you know we take all necessary precautions against flooding and landslides that report from hts news force in st lucia to the international sea now china's president lays out a sweeping vision for his country as he kicks off a pivotal meeting of the ruling elite as expected to shore up his grip on power the president called the progress China has made under his watch truly remarkable, but says more needs to be done as the country moves towards a goal of national rejuvenation. We get details now in this CNN report. He's kind of listed off the party's uh, achievements over the last five years, talking about things like environmental improvements, military buildup, uh, economic growth, diplomatic successes abroad. That's kind of the, the script for these kind of speeches. But what's different about this, I think, is uh, Xi Jinping's real focus on the party controlling every aspect of society. One of the things that you've seen is his continued emphasis saying that all of the things that we've achieved over the last five years can only continue if the Communist Party has absolute control over all aspects of society. And many would argue that Xi Jinping has absolute control over the Communist Party. Therefore, it's Xi Jinping himself kind of having absolute control over the, uh, uh, the entire country and the direction that the country moves forward. And that's what we're looking at here is, is Xi Jinping using this party Congress to really cement his status uh, as the most influential, the most impactful Chinese leader, you could argue, since Mao Zedong. And I think that over the next couple of days, depending on what happens here, uh, we could see Xi really cement his status uh, in, in Chinese Communist Party history. 
And that's news this afternoon, but for the very latest, you can log on to www.barbadosday.bb. Remember, you can also subscribe to our e-paper or email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Medium bus terminals or screenplay in a supermarket or a gas station near you. Also, tune in to Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a fabulous afternoon, and be sure to join us back here on 6 o'clock for our next update.